So a few days back, I was browsing through the Pinterest, and I found these cool 3D objects with these cool glass dispersion aesthetic materials, and I really liked it. So I was wondering if I can do the same thing in Blender, just by using a few notes in the shader editor. Now the only thing that I had were these references, however since I have a strong background with creating materials in Blender, I was pretty confident that I can do that. And I did. And this is the result, where I apply this material to a different objects and render them as animation. So let me show you how I did it. So first, let's load up the scene. Let's switch the render engine to cycles and the device to GPU. Let's also change the world color to black so that there is a zero ambient lighting and we will also have a greater contrast between the material and the environment. So now let's add any object. I'm gonna use a monkey. I'm gonna also add objects. So for this project, let's use monkey because it has a lot of smooth surfaces and it's also very detailed. So I'm gonna use a monkey, I'm also gonna use a subdivision of level 4 and just to make sure that the surface is smooth enough, I'm gonna shade it smooth. Now as you can see I have a pretty simple light setup. I have 3 lights, 1 backlight, 1 key light and 1 main light. Which is probably the most simple light setup that you can use to illuminate your object. And now let's actually get to the tutorial. Let's start by creating a new material. Let's delete the principal PSDF. And we will use a free glass shaders, because in order to create that chromatic ablation, we need to separate the red, blue and the green channel. However, I would like to make this effect a little bit more interesting. So instead of red, green and blue channels, I'm gonna use the cyan, magenta and yellow. So let's set the first glass to cyan, which consists of green and blue channels. So I'm gonna set the red channel to 0, and I'm gonna keep the green and the blue channel at 1. Also make sure that the white value on all of these three glasses is set to max. Now let's set the second one to magenta, which consists of red and blue channels. And let's set the last one to yellow, which consists of red and green channels. So now if I preview all of these glasses, you can see that all of them have specific colors. And now we need to add them together. And we can do this by using add shader. So let's use add shader node. And let's add these together, now let's duplicate the node, and now let's connect to the last one. It doesn't really matter in which order you set them up, because we are adding them together. Now because we added all three glass shaders together, it looks like a regular glass. However, for the dispersion part, we need to change the index of refraction for each glass individually. And we also need to use a different index of refraction for each glass texture. So for the first one, let's use 1.2. For the second one let's use 1.3 and for the last one let's use 1.4. And now as you can see we have successfully created the dispersion effect. And if you don't know what the index of refraction is, it basically refers to an angle under which a light refracts when it enters a specific volume. It's a property mostly used in transparent materials like glass, diamonds, water, ice or anything with a certain level of transparency. The IOR for glass is usually 1.45. However, each material has a different index of refraction based on its density, temperature, clarity, and other different characteristics. So when we change the index of refraction for each glass shader, we are basically changing the angle under which the light is bended, which can be pretty clearly seen when I switch between these glass shaders quickly. So now we have the dispersion, but the separation is pretty hard. And even though we have separated the channels, we also want to blend them a little bit together, so we can achieve that smooth rainbow transition between the channels. And to do this, we can increase the roughness for all channels. So let's add the value node, and let's plug it to the all roughness channels, and let's set the roughness to something like 0.1. Now we did blend the channels a little bit more, we made the glass a little bit less transparent. And I also don't want the roughness to be uniform everywhere, I want only a certain regions to have higher roughness. So let's delete the value, and instead of the value we are, we are gonna use a layer weight. So let's add a layer weight, and if I preview the facing output, it will basically create this gradient, where the dark areas are facing the camera, and the white areas are not. I want to use this information to determine the roughness of the materials. So let's tweak it a little bit more by decreasing the brightness, so we have more dark areas. 
Now let's use this output to drive the roughness of all glass shaders and if I preview this right now you can see that it looks a little bit more interesting but I would like to decrease the brightness a little bit more therefore it looks more like a glass. By the way you can also play with the contrast because when you decrease the contrast between the black and white values you will create a little bit smoother fall off which will blend the channels even more as you can see here. Now I would also like to add a little bit more randomness to the distribution of the roughness and for that I'm gonna use the noise texture. So let's add noise texture, let's switch the dimension to 4D, let's increase the scale to 10, and I'm gonna also increase the detail and the distortion to 2. And now I'm gonna mix the texture with the layer weight by using a mix node, and I'm gonna set the operation to linear light. And this is by far my favorite blending mode, because as you can see it basically takes the gradient from the facing output, the distorted noise, and it will basically remove it from the center and maintain it only on the edges. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna select the noise texture, and I'm gonna add coordinates with Ctrl T, but only if you have a node wrangler enabled in the add-ons. So if you don't, just search for a node wrangler and make sure it's enabled. Right now the noise is using generated coordinates, which are coordinates that come by default with every mesh, but I would like to change it to reflection. And don't ask me how it works because I don't know. The only thing that I know is that this works super well with this effect. And you can see that when I move around, the noise is also changing as well. Now I don't really want the white on the edges to be that white, so I'm gonna add a color ramp. Let's use the ease interpolation. I'm gonna move the sliders a little bit closer and I'm gonna also change the white because it is still glass and I don't want the glass to be too rough. And lastly, let's add some bump. I would really like to use this output that we are using for the roughness also for the bump to create that cool surface distortion. So let's take the color and let's plug it to the height socket of the bump node. Let's set the strength to something like 0.2. And again, let's connect the normal to the normal of each and every glass shader. You know what, let's set the strength to 1, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And last but not least, I would also like to add some imperfections. Now this can be anything, but, but for this I'm gonna use some scratch textures. So let's add some random scratch texture. As you can see, these are the scratches. Let's also make this texture a little bit bigger, so we can scale it by the mapping node. I'm gonna scale it to like 3. Again, I'm gonna tweak the texture with the color ramp. You can see that the texture is not fully black and white, so I need to make it a little bit more black. And let's also bring the white value a little bit closer. Let's make it ease. And I'm gonna duplicate the bump node. Let's duplicate it. Let's connect the color to the height. And to connect these two bump nodes together, let's connect the normal into the normal socket. And this is maybe too much, so let's decrease the strength to something like 0.1. And that's basically it. By the way, you can also make the glass a specific color if you can tweak the lights that are illuminating the glass. So if I set a certain color for the lights, it will directly impact the light that is being refracted. You can see that now there is no green color that is being refracted from the glass because all of these lights are using either pink or a blue color, which is a pretty cool way how you can create stylized glass. And that's it for the tutorial. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to get this project for free, the link where you can download it is in the description. Also check out my shitcard library, which is a library of over 100 procedural materials that I personally made for Blender users. There are different materials and different effects that you can use in your projects. All materials are easy to use, they are super user friendly to work with, but most importantly, you have a complete control over the characteristics, which means that you can fully customize the materials and make infinite variations. Now, I just recently updated the pack, which automatically makes the pack more expensive. However, because I released the update just recently, you can get it for cheaper and save money when you use the code Graffinity in the checkout. So if you are interested, it's the first link in the description. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. See you there.